So we can be turning to Romans chapter 9. You know, I mentioned last week how I've been listening to the Bible as a builder to mail. And I noticed a recurring theme of they like to kill people by smiting them under the fifth rib. <laughs> Maybe Brother Larry can expound upon its significance of that, but. Right into the heart. <laughs> mentioned numerous times throughout the book of Samuel and Kings. But look at Romans 9, is, I'm sure many of y'all know this. Talks about election in the beginning of the chapter, the sovereignty of God. And one of my favorite passages regarding God's sovereignty in here, how that He can make the same lump, one vessel in honor and one in dishonor. Right. Who was man to question that? One of Brother Larry's favorite passages is for the same purpose have He raised up Pharaoh. We're going to go down to verse 29, though, the end of the chapter here. After those things, He and begins to talk about the Jews versus the Gentiles. God's turning from the Jews towards the Gentiles. In verse 29, we'll pick up here, and it says in Isaiah, And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodom and been like unto Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. What shall we say then, that the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained their righteousness, even their righteousness, which is a faith. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, hath not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they saw it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling block. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. Elizabeth. The theme of these verses here is righteousness by faith in Christ. But he begins in our text. He said, uh, as Isaiah, or as Isaiah said before, that's referring back to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9. We don't have to turn there. But, Except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us to see, we had been as Sodom and been like unto Gomorrah. That Sabaoth that comes from the Hebrew and means host or armies. As you, we see the Lord of hosts is his title of times in the Old Testament. That's the same here as the Lord of Sabaoth. He is certainly the Lord of the host of heaven as well as the armies of Israel. In fact, in, I think it's in Daniel, he's, Nebuchadnezzar says, He doeth according to his will, no, armies of heaven mm -hmm. among the heavens of the earth. But here, he says, He left us a seed. He's, Referring primarily to the Jews here, but as Isaiah renders it, it says he left us a small, a very small remnant. That is a very few people that were to be saved. Amen. We see that in our day, but it was especially true of the Jews in Paul's time, that there were only a few Jews that were to be saved. We said, except he left us see, we had been like in the Sodom and been like unto Gomorrah. They would have been left in wickedness and for destruction. Right. Well, in this, we can we can see that it's all of God, isn't it? Amen. Whether Jew or Gentile, God had not left us a seed. If it had not been for God, we would have been just like Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm -hmm. With the Jews, they had the law, the prophets. They were the children of Abraham. That was often their claim. As a nation, they were God's chosen people, and yet. If it had not been for God, they would have been just as Sodom and Gomorrah, just as wicked and vile. Amen. And even more so, us as the Gentiles, if God had not left us to see, if God had not intervened on our behalf, we would have been just the same as those two cities. You're right. I think sometimes we forget that it's grace that causes us to differ. Amen. Not anything in and of ourselves, as we will see here in the next few verses. In verse 30, he goes on to say, What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith? He's asking how, how are we to respond to this, that only a remnant of Israel will be saved, and yet the Gentiles will become God's people. As he refers a few verses back, he's 
So the scripture in Hosea where it said, Them which are not my people, they shall be called my people. Mm -hmm. That is us. We were not the people of God. And yet, God said unto me, Ye shall be my people. Right. Now, so in early church history, and on through we've seen great conversions of people toward to the Christian faith, and yet we've seen very little today. Right. But yet, is it not God His own pleasure that saves and doesn't save? Amen. But what shall we say then that the Gentiles which fall not after righteousness have attained to righteousness? So by nature we did not follow righteousness. So if we can we can turn over to Ephesians 2 for just a moment. throughout the Old Testament except a handful of exceptions there is Gentiles did not follow after God they did not follow his law they did not try to serve God or worship him but we even now are we're the same way in our flesh Ephesians 2 verse 2 says where in times past you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit now worketh them, the children of disobedience among whom also we all had our conversation times past, and lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Amen. So we walked according to this world, he said, in times past. We didn't walk after righteousness. We, it says here, we were even by nature the children of wrath. We sought to fulfill our own lust, the lust of our flesh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Mm -hmm. We did everything except Paul after righteousness. Yet he says that we have, for the saved at least, and as a Gentile people in general, we have attained unto righteousness, he says. Amen. Well, that doesn't mean we've become these self-righteous people, as we'll see in a moment, but yet we have somehow obtained this righteousness even though we weren't seeking after it. And so it really is the case for everyone who's ever been saved. They were not really seeking after the righteousness of God, yet they have attained to it. They have received it. They've laid hold of it. They now possess the righteousness of God. If you've been born again, you can be sure you possess that righteousness, which is Amen. Amen. But you can be sure it wasn't anything of your own doing. Right. He says here, they obtained unto righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. Second Corinthians five twenty one tells us that for he, speaking of God, made him refer to Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin, that, he Amen. that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the key is always it's in Christ, it's through Christ that we can have righteousness with God. He calls it here, even the righteousness which is of faith. And that is the key. Faith is the key to righteousness before God. It has always been. Amen. Go back to Romans 3, for just a moment, Romans 3.22. Here he tells us that by the law no flesh shall be justified in verse 20, but he describes the righteousness which is of God in verse 22, and he says, Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. Amen. The righteousness of God comes by faith in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ, not by your own self-good works, not by Anything you can do. He says, upon, unto all and upon all them that believe. So it's not that Brother Larry has attained the righteousness of God, Brother Junior hasn't, or vice versa. All those who truly believe, we have the righteousness of Christ by faith. Amen. Faith. We can turn over to chapter 4 of Romans. We'll, we'll come back here in a moment, but verse 3 tells us what say it? 
The scripture, Abraham believed in God and was counted on him for righteousness. Amen. This refers back to Genesis 15, 6, where it says they believed in God and was counted unto him for righteousness. See, faith was key even in Abraham's day. So the Jews often looked to Abraham as their example and called him, called him their father, yet they didn't follow after the example of faith. We can turn over to Hebrews 11 and we see that, we don't have to turn there necessarily, but Hebrews 11 verse 7 tells us that Noah, by faith, became an heir of the righteousness of God. Amen. We see in verse 4 that Abel, by faith, we know that he was righteous before God. Amen. It's always been by faith. Going over to chapter 10 of Romans, it's still by faith that we are saved and obtain righteousness today. Amen. Uh, verse 9, verse 10 says, If thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. Then he goes on to further explain, he says, For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Amen. It's not with good works man becomes righteous, but it's with the heart man believes unto righteousness. It's by faith we obtain the righteousness of God, not by external works. But yet that is how the Jews sought after, and that's how many today seek after righteousness before God. Right. We go on to verse 31. And we see, he shows this of Israel. He says, but Israel which followed after the law of righteousness had not attained the law of righteousness. They had God's standard for righteousness. They had exactly everything they had to do, and they could have been righteous before God. Yet they could never attain it. They could never reach it. They could never arrive at that place of righteousness. Right. Well, the primary reason being because the law required perfect obedience, and no man was able to keep that. Galatians 2.21 tells us, Thou do not frustrate the grace of God, for righteousness came by the law, and Christ is dead in vain. Righteousness could not come by the law in and of itself. At least, so back in Romans 3.20, it said that for by the law shall no flesh be justified in this sight. Because the law said it was only to show us our sinfulness. It was only, to, as Paul described it, to be our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Mm -hmm. It was never, if I can say it, it was never really meant to bring about salvation, but show us our need for salvation. Amen. Really, it's the same today. It shows us our inability to stand up to God's standard for righteousness. Good. In one place, Paul says, the law of sin, God forbid, right? Not no sin except the law said, thou shalt not lust, thou shalt not covet, I think so. So the law teaches us that we are sinners. It shows us that we are incapable of righteousness in ourselves. But yet, the Jews sought after it that they might live up to a standard of righteousness and right. instead of trusting in God by faith. As we'll see here in verse 32, it says, Wherefore, or why, or for what cause? It says, because they saw it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. They didn't seek it the right way. So they were, the Jews were very self-righteous people, especially the Pharisees. Mm -hmm. they, we see the example of the Pharisee and the publican that went up to pray. Well, the Pharisee, he bragged on himself, didn't he? Say, right. He said, I'm not an adulterer, I'm not. As this publican, he said, I tithe. I tithe. Of all I possess, I pass twice in the week. That's the righteousness which is of the law. But that's not the righteousness which is of God. Amen. We can turn to Philippians chapter 3. We see Paul even shows himself to be in this manner before he was saved. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, verses 4 through 7 says, <clears throat> Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any man 
Sure. Any other man think that he hath whereof he might trust in the flesh, I am more. Notice in the next few verses he describes all that he was in his flesh. Circumcised on the eighth day of the stock of Israel, the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as such in the law of Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. For what things were gained to me, those I count lost for Christ. Amen. Paul had all this he could boast about, all this that he could say, Look at me, God, look what I have done. I mean, he was, thought he was doing God's service by persecuting the church. He says that here he was a Pharisee, so he knew the law in and out. And he even was blameless concerning the law of the Jews. But yet, without faith, all that was but dumb, he says. All it was useless and worthless. Right. Man today, though, they seeks after a works-based salvation. It's really no different than this, the Jews trying to keep the law for salvation. You're right. Well, if you don't seek it by faith, then you're <clears throat> on the wrong foundation to begin with. Today, people, they replaced faith with works. They replaced belief with obedience to the commandments. And all those things had their place, but yet that's not what salvation is. Is poor. Works don't save. Keeping the Ten Commandments can't save. Yet, isn't that how many base their quote salvation on today? You're right. If it didn't work for Israel and it won't work today. It must be by faith in Christ. He says, For they stumbled, speaking of the Jews, at that stumbling stone or stumbling block, it's called in other places. No, they just couldn't. Get it, he used to say. I mean, the, the law of the prophets, they point to Christ. And so we saw that Abraham believed God was count for him for righteousness. We see the examples of Noah and Abel and many others who had faith. And yet they just couldn't get it in their own mind. Mm -hmm. I'd say primarily because the carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of God. We see David understood this thing though. Let's turn back to chapter 4 of Romans again. We'll go ahead and start at verse 2. It says, For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore to glory, but not before God. Mm -hmm. See, that's the problem with works based salvation. The man would glory in it, man would boast in it. Amen. As Ephesians 2, 8, 9 tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and then not yourselves. It is the gift of God, verse 9, not of works. Let's say man should boast. Amen. Man will boast about it. Abraham was a, had a lot of good works, but that's not what justified him before God. We see again in verse 3, For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God and was counted him for righteousness. In verse 4, Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. And here is the other problem with works-based salvation. Is it's not of grace, it's, as he says here, it's of debt. And we, by nature, owe a debt which we can't pay. Amen. You can never work your way out of sin is a problem. Amen. If that's exactly what the Jews were trying to do, and that's exactly what many today try to do, you seek after a works-based salvation. Mm-hmm. Verse 4 and 2 verse 5 says, But him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth him, God lay his faith is counted for righteousness. So once, we, once again, we see righteousness comes by faith in God, particularly through the person of Christ. In verse 6 says, Even as David also described with the blessedness of the man to whom God imputeth righteousness without works. This is referring back to the first two verses of Psalm 32. Amen. It says, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Mm -hmm. See, there were a few that understood it, but by and large, especially by the time Christ came, the Jews completely missed the boat. Mm -hmm. Amen. So they, they were trying to serve the law. They were claiming to be the children of Abraham. They had all these things that they clung to. We got, it had to be by faith. It had to be, as David said here, that God would impute righteousness without words. It had to be that God would 
cover our sins and forgive our iniquities. And as he says in verse 8, that God would not impute sin to us. That he would not lay it to our account, if we will. Mm -hmm. Rather that God would give us Christ's righteousness and put our sins upon Christ. That was the key. And yet, in their own flesh, the Jews just couldn't grasp that. They stumbled at it, as it says here. But yet, that's what so many today do, too, isn't it? They stumble at that thought that really you don't have to do anything in and of yourselves to be saved. It's all of God. Right. We think we have to do something to be saved. <clears throat> Without getting ahead of myself, we'll go on to verse 33 here, back in our text. And he says, as it is written, this is it is referring to two verses in Isaiah, Isaiah 8, 14, and Isaiah 28, 16. It says, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone, and rock of offense, two serve blues on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Verse 22 and verse 23 say, For the Jews require a sign, the Greeks seek after, seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, and the Jews stumbling block, and the Greeks foolishness. Mm -hmm. Linda, them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Amen. You see here, Christ crucified, the Jews at the stumbling block, they just can't comprehend that Christ needed to be crucified for their sins. I mean, even as they were crucifying, they said, well, that be the Christ come down from the cross. Mm -hmm. Yep. The prophet plainly told them that Christ must die, even pointing to crucifixion in some places. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, Isaiah 53 ought to have been very plain to them that Christ had to suffer, that Christ had to take upon sin and die for sin. Amen. But yet, the Jews, they just couldn't grasp it, could they? Mm -hmm. And it says the Greeks, one of them, it was foolishness. We still have the same two things happening today, though, don't we? Some people just can't get it, and other people see it as foolishness. Right. Christ, especially Christ crucified, and really has sufficient work there on the cross. People just say, yeah, Christ was crucified, but I have to do this. Mm. Yeah, I know the scripture says he obtained eternal redemption for us, but I must get it, I must keep it. Yeah. If Christ was crucified, yes, he died for sin, but yet I have to be a good enough person. Or you have the other side where it says, but it's just foolishness that, well, God's so great, why did he let sin happen to begin with? Or they say, right. well, if Christ was God, why did he have to... Crucified. Crucified. <laughs> well, if he was going to be resurrected again, this is one argument I've heard. And was it really a, much of a sacrifice that he died? Mm. It's in their minds foolishness to them. Right. But by and large, that's how Christ is seen. Either a stumbling block or foolishness. Either they just can't get it or they just don't want to get it. Right. But yet, to those that believe he is the power of God. In fact, the gospel said it's the power of God unto salvation. So don't be discouraged when others don't, quote, get it. Mm -hmm. Right. Let's turn to 1 Peter before we close here. Certainly Christ is that stumbling stone, that rock of offense that Isaiah referenced and Paul refers to here. 1 Peter chapter 2. It's right chapter 2. If we go on, go back to verse 4, it says that to whom 
coming as unto Livingstone, this loud and deed of man, but chosen of God and precious, ye also as lively stones are built upon a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion, the chief cornerstone, the lake precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Amen. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he, even of Christ, is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the performer. Amen. The stone of stumbling and the rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, be disobedient. Wherefore, unto Whereunto also they were appointed. Mm -hmm. Christ is that stumbling stone, that rock of offense that men are offended at, that men stumble at, that they just can't quite grasp the simplicity of the gospel. They want to add to it, they want to take away from it. Man, by nature, doesn't want to just accept the gospel as it is. You're right. Yeah. Oh, but unto us, he is the chief cornerstone. He is it's here very precious to us. Want to, if we're built on anything else but Christ, we're built on the wrong thing. Amen. He says, unto them which believe on him, they shall not be ashamed. Or as Peter says there, they shall not be confounded. Oh, when we stand before God, we'll not be ashamed when we believe on Christ. That we, we're built on Christ as our foundation. Oh, well, many, many will stand before them having their foundations of wood, hay, and stubble. Right. And they'll have their foundation burnt up. They'll be lacking when they stand before God. Oh, so Christ is this one who people just can't grasp for some reason. They, like I said, I know it's because their flesh is in enmity with God. Their, their flesh cannot comprehend the things of God, but the Spirit must reveal it unto them. But, but the promise is still the same. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. Believe on Him. Whosoever believes on Him shall not be ashamed, as Paul says here. No, it's not of works. It's not of... Who our lineage is is not of anything else, but it must be by Christ, or by faith through Christ. Listen, the Jews, they sought after this righteous, which is was in and of themselves, but we must seek after the righteous, which is through Christ. Mm -hmm. They sought to be saved by their own works, as many today do, yet we must simply rest on Christ and His finished work. Amen. So I know to many it will be this stumbling stone, this rock of offense, this foolishness and other things to the world, but yet those which are saved it will be the power of God and salvation. Amen. So let us say with David, blessed is the man whom the Lord will not impute sin, the man who sins are forgiven and his transgressions are covered. Let us not say as the world says, blessed is the man who does good works and hmm. blessed is the man who is a good person or is baptized. No, we don't need to add or take away anything from the gospel. Amen. It's fully sufficient in and of itself in all of its simplicity just to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Mm -hmm. I realize there's a whole lot of other stuff you can get into. But how the Spirit works on you, and how the Spirit must birth you anew, and how God gives you a new heart, and how He gives you new desires, and how afterwards you will serve Him if you've truly been born again. There's a lot of things that go along with that, but still simply just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Amen. I realize God had made some vessels of wrath, and some vessels of mercy, and some vessels of honor, and some vessels of dishonor. But as uh, Brother Spurgeon once said, uh, the elect don't have a yellow stripe on their back, or why they go around lifting up shirt tails. <laughs> so for us that are saved, it's our, God, our job is to simply spread the gospel. 
For those that aren't saved, it's your responsibility to believe the gospel. Even if it doesn't make sense to the flesh. Right. Simply trusting Christ and you can have righteousness before God, but there is no other way for righteousness before Him. Many, many, many will stand before Him, trusting in everything else but Christ, mm -hmm. and be sorely disappointed. Right. They'll say unto Him, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and thy name cast out devils, and thy name done many wonderful works? But He will say unto Him, Depart from me, you works of iniquity, for I never knew you. Right. Amen. I think no lack of better way to put it, no sadder words could will ever be spoken, who knows. Though if you've been born again by the grace of God, then enter thou into the kingdom. Or enter thou into the joy of the kingdom of thy Lord, you'll say. Mm -hmm. Oh, how we ought to desire here. Well done, thou been faithful servant. Amen. Oh, with that. Mm -hmm.